happens when you're 17, 18 years old, you don't realize what's what's really happening. And uh, but we was uh, all young. The crew was young. That I saw the other night. They said the average age was 19 on the Enterprise. Well, I was still in VF-6 at the time, so my job was taking care of the fighters, radio equipment and the fighters. Mm -hmm. And uh, my uh, position was in, on the flight deck, and uh, occasionally on the hangar deck, but mostly on the flight deck. If somebody came in with a problem with the radios, I, then I got involved in that. And. Uh, uh, I think we were hit three or four times during that Eastern Solomon. I know I was caught out on the flight deck when we were under attack, and we took several hits. And uh, when when they started making their bomb runs, I took cover as best I could. There wasn't much cover to take, but I got inside of the, inside the island structure, and that was the battle where we lost all those people back on the five-inch gun. Mm -hmm. It took a direct hit in the ready powder room back there and just whoosh, there. That's when I really grew up a little bit. I, I, I walked back and, and looked at that terrible scene back there where these guys were all burned up. It was just a flash fire and they were just burned instantaneously. And that'll make a believer out of you, any they will. It seemed like it, if I was doing my job, I was usually on the flight deck at the time it, it happened. Airplanes were landing and some taking off and we were just trying to service the airplanes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when the guns started firing away and we realized that we were under attack, then we tried to take cover some way. I went over to the catwalk. There's not much protection over there, but it did feel better. <laughs> Seemed like I was always up there when it happened. But that's better than being down in the engine room or someplace. Those guys on that, those repair parties, they just put them down there in second and third deck down and dogged all the hatches down, and, and that's where they stayed. A couple of times we had bomb hits right nearby and wiped out a bunch of those repair guys. A couple of bombs went all the way down to the third and fourth deck, and one of them hit in the officer's country where, where most of our pilots were, were staterooms and just totally devastated that area. Because the petitions and everything were kind of aluminum, and it just blew them all out. And uh, uh, some went on down into the engine room and caused a lot of damage in the engine room. And uh, a couple of our elevators were put out of operation. Uh, luckily one was, the one that was the most damaged was on was on the flight deck at the time it was hit, so we could still land airplanes on the back. One bomb went on down and hit near the side of the air, of the of the carrier, and blew a hole in the side, and we were taking water up through that hole. I went down there, up and out on the fire watch while the guys were welding, and they were trying to, they were stuffing everything you could find in those holes like old mattresses and so forth, and they, they using two before's and things like that and until they could get a patch put on the side. But luckily, it seemed like a long time, but luckily it just, it, the attacks just used the last five or 10 minutes. And uh, by then we had shot them all down or, or the few stragglers got away. We usually put them in, in pretty bad shape. We could put up a lot of anti-aircraft with two or three carriers and battleships and so forth. And they didn't stand much of a chance.
So I was on the first patrol that went out, and we sat there for four hours and re over the top of them. Went back, got relieved. I went back out again in the afternoon on the last uh, group that was out there. We just got over to Chicago again for this time, and it said, return to ship Buster. And we, we, were, we had this little 42-gallon tank that we operated off of all the time, you know, to extend our range. And, and so I'm, I'm, we're all on that thing. And so we go back to the ship, and we got us climbing. They wanted us to get up. We were orbiting around at 10,000 feet, and they, went, they said, go to Angels 20. I hear all this chatter going on on the radio, but look out. And right here are 12 Bettys in a left turn. And the ship is over there, you know, the Enterprise. Well, they had launched people from the Enterprise, and I don't know what turned them, whether they were really after the Chicago or whether they, I think they, they ran over it by, I think they were lucky. I think they were there to hit the Enterprise, and, and I, I, I don't know why their leader turned away. And so I'm sitting on the middle of this turn. I just nosed over, and I had a, was in position to make a beautiful high side on this guy, and this Betty is a, is a pretty big airplane, you know, and it's a beautiful thing. It just, I was squeezed off one, I, 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 about a one second burst, and he just exploded, just came apart. And so I pull up and down on the other side, and everybody in that formation is shooting at me. There, there's so many tracers going by, you know, and so I, so I back down on the other side, I'm in perfect position again, and out here, I nailed the guy on the other, out of this group. I shot his port engine, and he, he, he had full power on the other one, and he just rolled on his back, and he was going down. Well, I straightened out of that, and here's the guy in front of me who's got his, his port engines out, and he, he's standing on the wing, and he's right in front of me, burning. So I shot out the other engine. You hit the fuel cell someplace, and if it sprayed on the engine, that was the end. Boom, it was gone. And if they were pulling G's, and you hit in the wings, the wing came off. You know, one, one, one fifty caliber in there, and that it would take a wing off. And I mean, they literally came apart completely. They just, you know, just confetti. You could fly right through the, and, and often, if you were firing in close like I always did, you know, you, you went through the debris, because it, it was, it, it was instantaneous. Boy, you know, just poof, and there was nothing there. These guys ran away from us. They just, they were out of gun range, you know. And, and they had four left, and they came down there, and the Chicago was right. I don't know whether they knew where it was or whether it was pure accident, but boy, they, they were dead on on the Chicago coming in there, and the guy dove, he, he just ran away from us. And we sat there trailing them down and watched them. They all tightened up, boy, and they, they dropped those fish into the side of that Chicago. And boy, we saw these explosions going off on the, they, they got hits, and that those their torpedoes were. Once they leveled out down there, they slowed down pretty fast, and we were catching up with them. And Flatley, being a smart guy, he lobbed shells in front of this character. Well, it panicked the guy. And this guy pulled up, and he's going up. Well, I'm sitting on the right side, you know, dumb ensign. He, he pulled, he got in the cloud, and I went in after him. Well, what happened? He got inside this cloud, and instead of going through, he pulled it coming back. Yeah, I almost hit him. I, he, I'm in the cloud. And, I, and the next thing I see is this silhouette coming. I just had time to squeeze the trigger. And I'm sure I hit right in the cockpit or in, in the cockpit area. But I, I actually had to roll inverted in order to keep my wing from hitting him. I rolled inverted and came out on the top side, and there was nothing up there. So I backed down below again. I look around a little bit, and there's flatly. And I joined up on Flatley, and he gives me a big thumbs up. And I said, you know, I'm kind of perplexed and looking at him. He's, he's pointing down. I look down there, this big oil slick. He said a guy came out of the cloud, and he, he said he wasn't burning, but he just, he augured straight in. So we figure I killed the pilot, probably.